Hey guys and welcome to another video. So the idea of this project is to take a notebook that has a smashed or broken screen, maybe it is missing a few keys and using an external graphics card to turn it into a real cheap gaming computer. Just up front, the project worked fine but there are some challenges along the way that I encountered. I will go over those later in the video so do stick around to get the full picture. I asked around town for a notebook with a smashed screen and I was able to borrow one right away. So if this project interests you, maybe you can get one for a really low price and maybe even for free as I could see many just wanting to throw away such a machine. So the laptop we're working with today is the HP ProBook 450 G2. It comes with an Intel Core i5 4010U. Now apparently being an i5 on a notebook means something else. This is only a dual core with hyper threading but still it's a fairly decent uh, processor. We have 8 gigabytes of RAM and an integrated Intel HD video card and I swapped out the hard drive for a SSD just to save a bit of time working on this project. We will go over the installation process next but first let's dive straight into the performance because that's really what matters. How much of an improvement are we going to see when comparing the integrated Intel HD graphics with an external graphics card? I ended up going with a Radeon HD 6970 but more on this later in the video. The games we're looking at today are all running at 1080p. We have Crisis at very high details, Just Cause 2 with a mix of custom high and medium details, Bioshock Infinite runs with high details and we also have Rise of the Tomb Raider running with low details. So let's have a look at the results with the integrated Intel HD graphics. In Rise of the Tomb Raider we're getting 6.2 FPS, in Bioshock Infinite we're getting 8.7. Just Cause 2 has the highest performance with 15 FPS and Crisis runs along with 8.5. And here we have the results with the external graphics card, the Radeon HD 6970. So Rise of the Tomb Raider, huge improvement, runs at 29.5 FPS now, Bioshock Infinite 43.1, Just Cause 2 60.8 and Crisis 36.2. And here we get a better picture of the performance improvement. We're basically getting a performance improvement of between 4 and 5x the performance of the integrated graphics. So that's quite awesome to be honest. Especially uh, these two games, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Bioshock Infinite, 5 times the performance. That is really quite impressive. And to be honest, it's more than I uh, expected to get out of this external graphics card. So let's go over the installation process. How does all of this work? To connect an external graphics card, we're using the EXP GDC Beast external graphics card dock. This is a review sample that Banggood sent to our YouTube channel. You can find links down below in the description and I'll try to get us a discount code as well. We're using the version with the mini PCI Express connector. Installing the device is fairly straightforward. You need to remove the wireless card for this to work, then plug in the external graphics card dock. For networking you will have to use either Ethernet or get one of these cheap USB dongles. The other side of the cable has a HDMI connector which goes into the graphics card dock. We also need power. Now you can get a dedicated power supply but you can also use a standard ATX power supply which I used in this video. So connect the 20 pin ATX as well as the 4 pin connector. For testing I started off with an old GeForce GT 630 just to see that everything works but eventually I ended up going with the Radeon HD 6970. This card needs extra power in the form of an 8 pin and a 6 pin plug. Also the monitor connects directly into the graphics card. I did try a GT 1030 but that didn't work out for me and I will talk about this later in the video. When you turn the laptop on now, the external video card should turn on with the fans spinning. You should also see a LED light up on the graphics card dock. At first I didn't get a picture on the monitor, but I walked away and did something else and when I came back, Windows 10 had already downloaded the Radeon driver and I had a picture on the main monitor. So far all of this sounds pretty good, it's pretty easy to set up and the performance improvement is very nice. But before using the Radeon HD 6970, I did try a GT 1030 and I didn't have much luck. I ended up trying quite a few notebooks. One notebook for example, a HP Pavilion DM1, greeted me with a message that an unsupported wireless card is being used. So some laptops 
don't like you to change the wireless card. Just be aware of that. I also tried the Chewy Lapbook that we took a look at recently. This one had the wireless card soldered onto the motherboard. So that was also a no-go. So might, it might be worth having a look at the motherboard on the laptop beforehand. The GT1030 unfortunately just would not work out for me. I did a bit of research and it seems that in the latest Nvidia video cards and drivers, they just don't work with these external docks. There seem to be some workarounds and things you can try, but for me, swapping the video card for an AMD one was just easier and I only had limited time to get on with it. So what I'm saying here is that all of this is pretty much unsupported and you are a little bit at the mercy of the notebook and video card manufacturers. I do recommend that you do a bit of research beforehand about your notebook model number and also what graphics card you plan on using or adjust your expectations a little bit and risk the possibility of this not working with your setup. In terms of PCI Express bandwidth, on my machine the link is PCI Express 2.01x, so that's quite a bit slower than what you would see on a desktop, but we've seen the performance results, it's still a nice improvement over the integrated graphics. Also, just in case you're wondering, the HD6970 is indeed my fastest AMD Radeon video card I had access to, so I wasn't able to find out if it scales beyond that. But all the games I tried to turn from running quite poorly to being really playable. So if you find a laptop with a smashed screen and you've got a spare power supply and a video card lying around, then this could be a cheap way of extending the life of this laptop. So there you have it guys. We used a laptop with a smashed screen and maybe you can find one for free. We attached an external graphics card for a nice performance boost. Compatibility with your setup isn't guaranteed, but if it works, then this could save you a bit of money. What do you think about this project? Have you used external graphics cards with laptops before? And could you see yourself trying this out? And that's it for this video guys. If you're interested, do check out the links below in the description. Any questions, I will do my best to answer them below in the description. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, the usual YouTube stuff. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Click on that notification bell so you're getting updates on future videos. Like, dislike, share with your friends and I shall see you soon with another one.